Right there, geezers. Jules here from FGS, home of the Future Game Show. And you know what? While I absolutely love doing the deep cut with Jules Gill, baby, and doing a deep dive into gaming's past to bring you new games like a present for your future enjoyment. Huh, fantastic wordplay there, Jules. I have been having a little bit of a think. I don't want this series to come across as being like elitist or exclusionary. I want this to be a safe haven for gaming, not to safeguard it from other people and say, oh, you can't be part of our sweaty little club if you didn't know about this game that came out for the Nintendo DS. Like, th that's not what I want to be about. So today, I'm actually going to be approaching the cozy gamers, those who have no interest in fighting games and ridiculous horror titles that scare the pants off you, or just the utterly greasy aspect of online ranked matches, but I want to apply my little twist to it too. I want to cover cozy games that you may not know about, but may be inspired by the favourites that are already in your library. So come with me on this nice relaxed walk today, as I'm Jules, this is FGS, and these are 8 cozy games to get lost in. Number 8. If you like Townscaper, why not try Tiny Glade? Now, I don't know about you, friends, but I'm very much a town mouse when it comes to spending time in the big city. Maybe it's the smog, maybe it's the endless crowds, maybe it's the fact that I just enjoy the thrill of being mistaken for an egg by a giant predatory bird here in the countryside. But when it comes to spending time in the big smog, I've got a bit of a about it. However, I will absolutely blow smoke up video games that give you the power to build your own cutesy utopia, and I immediately fell in love with Townscaper's offbeat and oddly relaxing town planning formula, which lets you build adorable villages with few restrictions and even less penalties for creating a mishmash of side streets that would be an utter hell to traverse in real life. <sighs> Jesus Christ, mate, are you okay? Yeah, I went out to go to the Bureau de Change, but I've been lost in these streets for like three months. Yeah, it's not very pedestrian friendly, is it? Not in the slightest. Oh God, they're building again. No! Yet, if you've already popped and plopped to your heart's content in that title, then why not check out Tiny Glade, which in the game's own words, lets you doodle castles. This is true creativity given form, and because there's no end goal, combat, or resource limit, you are free to build, break, reposition, and spiral up into the clouds. And if this wasn't cutesy or relaxing enough, you can take a break from your wondrous castle building to just sit around, watch, and indeed pet the local wildlife. Oh yes. <laughs> Truly, the sun always shines in Tiny Glade, and you can bathe in this creative castle builder later this year when it drops in Q3. Number 7. If you liked Papers, Please, then why not try Little Guardsman? Okay, 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 I know what you're probably thinking right now. Jules, you smooth pebble of a man, how the hell is Papers, Please gonna be considered a cozy game? And you know what, I'm gonna stop you right here. It's not at all. I just needed something to tie in the style of gameplay into what we're about to talk about, because nothing about trying to deny entry and exit to a war-torn country while your family dies of starvation in poverty is chill. It's 0% chill. Negative amounts of chill. But little guardsman, hoo -hoo, yeah baby. But that doesn't mean that the concept of checking papers and passports can't be a relaxing, light-hearted and overall fun time, and that's exactly what the recently released Little Guardsman is here to prove. Now here you play as Lil, who has been thrust into the heady world of bureaucracy as she must help her dad and the realm at large let the right ones in and keep the wrong ones out. This means it's up to you to check alibis, royal decrees, and use magically infused items to root out the truth, and it's all delivered in such a relaxing and comical way that it is a pleasure to poke and prod mythical creatures until your shift is over. I mean, yes, one of the tools that you have at your disposal is a whip, and the idea of just cracking that in somebody's face probably isn't very chill, but you know what, 99.9% of the rest of the game is, so we'll let that one slide. Plus, I'm sure a few of them out there really enjoy it anyway. Look, trust me, no judgement, no judgement. It also helps that the game provides you with multiple options to reset the days if you mess up. Plus, it looks and sounds fantastic and has a through-line narrative that is equal parts humorous and heartfelt, making it an easy recommendation for cozy gamers who like a few puzzles here and there. Number 6. If you like romance games, then give Tulip a smooch. 
Okay, okay, friends, L listen, listen, listen. You didn't think that I'd be able to go an entire episode without reaching back into my archaic library of printed media, did you? I mean, that's bad for my health, come on, just cut me some slack here. So, I present to you, with a little peck on the cheek, a game all about smooching, the PS2 underappreciated cult classic, Tulip. Mm. Which is a game all about smooching strangers. Yes, it sounds weird. And it is. Now, if the idea of smooching strangers sounds incredibly strange and in this day and age totally inappropriate to kiss randoms, then yeah, you're bang on the money, as Tulip is utterly bonkers. But it's also a title with so much charm, oddball energy, and quirky appeal that you'll be wanting to lock lips with Tulip in short order. That being said, always get consent. I know I don't have to tell you lot at home, but it's just I feel like I need to state it right here. Now, the aim of the game is to help citizens of a small town with their requests or puzzles in order to get them to kiss you as practice so you can win over the girl of your dreams. This requires you to think outside the box, listen in on conversations, and drink in the absolutely weird vibes that this game has to offer. So if you're a fan of relaxing romance novel-esque games and are tired of one in every five of these being a secret horror title, thank you very much Doki Doki Literature Club, cheers for that one there, then give Tulip a try because it will tickle that romance fantasy of yours while also scratching those brain cells as you try to solve very silly puzzles. Oh, and by the way, if you thought that Tulip was a bit strange, you just wait until you see what's at the number one spot. You are not ready. <laughs> oh, I tell you, all that smooching's got me hot under the collar, but you know what? I'm going to continue to spread the love by thanking all of those that have subscribed to the FGS YouTube channel. Without you, we literally couldn't do this, and I appreciate every single one of you. But if you're not subscribed, then don't worry. It's okay, my friend. We can rectify that right now, because if you do, then you'll be staying up to date with all of our daily gaming content, and you'll be notified every single Friday when I go live with the deep cut, baby. And it's always a good time. I mean, you're here. It's a good time. Anyway, let's keep this video trucking by talking about a game that involves trucking. Oh, what a segue. Number five, if you like Euro Truck Simulator 2, then why not try Star Trucker? Now, in all fairness, I could just have a really short entry here and just say, if you like Euro Truck Simulator 2, this is that, but in space. Please insert the Tim Curry in space line from Command and Conquer. Thank you. I'm escaping to the one place that hasn't been corrupted by capitalism. SPACE! As if you're into the Euro truck hole, then you're in deep, my friend, and so the ability to do all of that cathartic driving, parking and unloading, but with the added element, or a lack of it in this case, of zero gravity, that will be so appealing that you might actually float out of your seat, but then be held back down again by your raging boners. However, there is a lot more going on with Star Trucker than first meets the eye, outside of the fact that you'll now need to pilot your truck and cargo without the lovely reassuring presence of gravity. Ah, gravity. God, I love you. Except when I have to stand up again, because... <laughs> Ooh! But you'll also need to maintain your cabin pressure, repair O2 leaks that arise from bumping into debris, and keep an eye on traffic coming in from all angles. And of course, often hilariously, you'll have to maintain your artificial gravity so that your cargo doesn't float about the container, only to come crashing down once you've docked. Now, admittedly, while this does sound a little more intense than Euro Truck Simulator, once you're on the open, and I mean very open highways of space, with nothing but your radio and planets and stars, stars around you, well, there's nothing quite like it. It is beyond relaxing to feel the warm glow of a distant sun or star or a planet just emerge out of the abyss. It's just, it's just fantastic. It really is. With nothing but the local radio and a view for the ages for company, it's just you, your cargo and the stars, and quite honestly, it's breathtaking. Number four, if you liked honking up a storm with Untitled Goose Game, you will love Doggy Don't Care. Now, Untitled Goose Game was one of those wonderful gaming moments where players all across the world put aside their petty online squabbled and sweaty ranked matches to just be a silly little goose in a wonderfully silly little indie title. The sheer joy of being a mildly annoying goose allowed the world over to let out their mischievous side without the threat of moral quandaries and digital casualties, and thanks to its wonderfully minimalistic art style, even drew attention from those not into gaming into the party. 
So if that tickled your digital pickle, then you will absolutely yourself in excitement to learn about Doggy Don't Care, which feels like a spiritual successor to that title, where you play a rambunctious pug who is out to cause utter chaos. As soon as your owner's attention is turned elsewhere, it's down to you to chew, dig, and indeed pee on everything they hold dear in order to solve puzzles and then turn those big puppy eyes on them to avoid being yelled at. It's a callback to games like Goat Simulator and Octodad, where the silliness reigns supreme. And thanks to your trusty pal Rocco the Parrot, you'll always have a guide on hand to help you if you get stuck, meaning that this will be accessible for all types of gamers. Plus, look at this little pooch's face. How could you not want to play as this adorably silly character? Plus, there is a demo out of this game right now, so you don't even have to wait to find out what you think about it. Number three, did unpacking scratch an itch? Well, you will love Inconini, one store, many stories. Okay, hottest take of 2024 coming in right now. Work kind of sucks sometimes. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, okay, joking aside, I, I know. But the thing is, is that the last thing that you probably want to do after a hard day at the office is to come home and play a game about going to work. But in Canini, One Store Many Stories is just such a marvelously enchanting and entrancing game that I feel that many will be willing to put in a double shift. In fact, its main gameplay loop was so appealing it raised my eyebrows to dangerous levels. Thankfully, the surgeons were able to reattach them. They did a fantastic job, as you can tell. That being said, Inconini, and I hope that I'm pronouncing that right, kind of looks like a slice of heaven as much as it does a slice of life, as here you play as a store worker helping out their aunt by tidying shelves, stacking things neatly, and making sure the store is clean and neat. With a wonderful art style, warm fluorescent glows, and a chilled out soundtrack, this title immediately draws you in for a long shift. Yet, the real drive of this game comes from the customers that you'll meet, who alongside helping them find the items that they need, also give you an insight into the rural town around you and into their origin stories, with each playing a part in the game's light, unwinding narrative. This is a game all about getting to know your neighbours, and about building a community and strengthening it as a result. And I love that as a message for a game. Like, it's just so simple, so charming, so pleasant, and to be honest, I really feel that this game is going to appeal to a lot of us, despite the premise of it being just working a shift. I think that many of us are actually going to sign up for overtime. Number two, did Journey hit you right in the feels? Well, brace yourself for Farewell North. Now, I think that for those that played Journey, we all remembered the moment we finally reached the summit, where our adventure was over and we were left with this bittersweet feeling of having achieved what we set out to do, but now being bereft of that wonderful experience. It was at once joyous and heartbreakingly sad that we'd just been through one of the greatest gaming experiences ever, and there probably wouldn't be many more like that down the line. Well, now, what I want you to do is take those emotions, that feeling, ball it up into a fist and punch yourself right in the gut, because that is what Farewell North is about to do to you, because this game, oh god, it's going to be emotional. Here you play as a border collie who is on a quest to bring colour and vibrancy back to their owner's life, who appears to be going through some form of bereavement or loss. As you help restore that life, you spark joy and understanding in her world and the environment around you. And are you crying yet? Because yes, I bloody well am. If delivered correctly, this could go down as kind of like a Kami meeting flower, and I am all for that, especially if it helps people going through loss make a little more sense of their own existence. This is the best thing about gaming. It provides people with a touchstone or an anchor point. It allows them to take their emotions, what they're going through, and apply it to something practical that's unfolding right in front of them. It allows them to process things in a better way and in a healthy way as well, because they can see what others are going through. They can take what they want from it and insert themselves into that narrative. And Farewell North, from all accounts, looks like it might be a very important game and a bloody good one too. And number one, an action mech combat game with sim elements. I told you you weren't ready. And so we close on a game that is so utterly deranged, silly, action-packed, over-the-top, and mighty chill, weirdly. We're going to be talking about the deep cut that is Bumpy Trot, or as it's known here in the West, Steambot Chronicles. 
Definitely should have been called Bumpy Trot. What a name. Now, you might be looking at footage of this action RPG and thinking, okay, so last time I checked, cozy games were all about taking it easy and nothing about watching a robot throw another robot through a wall looks kind of chill. And yes, I totally agree. This is by far and away a lot of action for a game that supposedly belongs on this list. But trust me, this is but a part, an excellent one for the record, of Bumpy Trot. Because when you're not in combat, this game is basically an open world sim title in disguise. Yeah, that's right. When you're not getting doused in engine oil like Conan the Barbarian bathing in the blood of his enemies, you're free to explore a massive city, trying on outfits, going on dates, harvesting crops, engaging in trading, playing pool, furnishing a house, taking part in archaeological digs, or just bothering the hell out of anyone you meet thanks to the dialogue options letting you be a total and utter jerk. It's kind of like Harvest Moon meets Armored Core. It is a crossover that I did not expect to work so well, but my god, it does. Now, I understand that the action may put off a lot of people who are looking for a much more relaxed time, but for those who played Armored Core but wanted to dial things down a bit and just have a more relaxed fun time, this is their cozy game. This is purpose-built very specifically for your weird request. Now, I won't lie to you. Yay! Controlling these trotmobiles is pretty challenging at first, as each analog stick represents a different side of the machine, meaning that you'll have to spend a while getting used to just going from point A to point B. But the fact that you can customize your trot, color it any way you like, and then hit the town in a towering bipedal monster, that is well worth it. Just get used to waiting at traffic lights, because yeah, you're a good guy who obeys traffic laws despite looking like you could level a town. Uh, excuse me, sir. Is this your vehicle? Yes, it is, is it? Uh, did you think that you are above the law and are allowed to go through a red light just because you are over 30 foot tall and have a giant arm battle cannon? I think not, sir. I think not. Will you please step out of the vehicle? Yes, I will wait as you unfold the 13 ladders you need to get out. I have time. Do you? Do you? Are you talking back to an officer? I will come up there, sir. Not on my watch, Sonny Jim. And add on to everything we've just explored, a winding narrative about love, friendship, and the dawning of a new industrial era for all of its pros and cons, and you've got maybe 10% of what makes Bumpy Trot so special, with the remaining factors being its satisfying, if sometimes tricky combat, its wonderful world building, and of course, its insane premise of fusing action mecha spectacle with the ability to live out your time in the game as a humble honey merchant. I love this game, it is so undeniably weird. Thank you, Bumpy Trot. And there we go, my friends. Those were eight obscure cozy games that you will lose yourself to. I hope that you enjoyed that. And please let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below. As always, I've been Jules. Thank you very much for watching. You can follow me over here on the social medias and my lovely editor over here as well. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. Hope you're treating yourself well. I hope that you're covering yourself in that warmer, cozy glow of positivity by reminding yourself that you are a big legend. You deserve the best things in life like love, happiness, and success. And do not let anything or anyone tell you otherwise. If they do, you get into your Tropmobile, mate. You put that death cannon down right there and you fire out all of that honey that you've been collecting. All right? All right? As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.